BMW's fifth generation M3 comes solely in four-door form and features turbo power for the first time. Under the bonnet, there's a smaller straight-six three-litre engine with greater power for track heroics you'd never think could be so effectively combined with the more mature manners of a sensible sports saloon. For the right kind of buyer, it's quite a car. If you've an ounce of petrol flowing through your veins, you'll know exactly what this is. BMW's M3. It's a name that evokes a rich history of competition, tyre smoke and unremitting motorsport development over more than three decades and four generations of the Munich maker's practical, power-packed performance car. Welcome to the Mark V model. You'll probably remember this car as a coupe, a body shape BMW's M division still makes, but now designates the M4. The more familiar badge continues on though for four-door folk, and whatever body style you choose, the engineering is basically the same, and very different from what went before. Out goes the fourth generation version's thirsty, high revving 4 litre V8, and in its place we're presented with the first turbo engine ever offered in this model line, a twin turbo unit, in fact, potent enough to overcome this power plant's smaller six cylinder 3 litre size and boost power by 11 brake horsepower and torque by an astonishing 35%. The 6 into 3 formula will actually be a very familiar one for long-time fans of this car. Both the second generation E36 model of 1992 and the Mark III E46 design of 2000 both also used straight 6 engines, though normally aspirated ones. But if you had pictures of one of those on your bedroom wall, you'll perhaps come to this modern version with the wrong kind of expectation. Here, the M3 has evolved from hairy-chested racer to cultured street supercar. It's a matured, though still magnificent, prospect. Does that make it fit to wear this famous badge? Let's find out. So, what's this M3 really like? will like no other 3 Series saloon, that's for sure. You realise this as soon as you hit the start button of this 5th generation F80 Series model and the twin turbo straight 6 engine fires up with a throaty roar. The noise may not be quite as emotive as the Revy V8 used in this car's direct E90 Series predecessor, but it'll still alert the neighbours to the fact that something rather special is sitting on your driveway. I've always thought of M cars of this kind as being particularly suited to six-cylinder power, and indeed both second and third generation E36 and E46 model M3s had it, though in normally aspirated form. Adding twin turbos to that configuration has a predictably huge impact, powering this fifth generation model not only past those two old stages, but also past the Mark IV V8 version it replaced. Not only has outright power risen over that car from 414 to 425 brake horsepower, but more significantly, torque has increased by a massive 35%, and that makes all the difference. With a big, normally aspirated engine fitted up front, the previous generation version of this model required selection of a lower gear for instant acceleration below 4,000 RPM, so you constantly had to keep the engine spinning, which was fun if you were in the mood, but a little tiring if you weren't. Now, thanks to 550 Newton meters of pulling power this time round, that's not necessary here. You simply uh, plant your foot in almost any gear, and it goes very fast. 50 to 75 miles an hour in fourth, occupying just three and a half seconds in the manual model and 4.2 seconds in this auto version. True, there isn't the razor sharp throttle response you only get from normally aspirated induction, and I rather miss that, but turbo lag is slight, and once the blowers have spooled up, 
bear your passport to absolutely ridiculous speed. How much speed? Well, I'm going to try and demonstrate. Here I've got the MDCT twin clutch auto version that almost all buyers choose, though unlike Mercedes and Audi models in this segment, BMW does still give buyers a manual stick shift option. I can see why most people want the auto though with its so-called drive logic technology. You can either use it as a conventional automatic in drive mode or switch into sequential mode and do the changes yourself, either with the stick or with steering wheel mounted paddle shifters. Now there's also the option of changing the ferocity of the shift speed using this button at the base of the gear stick. You'll need maximum ferocity selected if you're to play with the MDCT transmission's other party piece, launch control. Let's stop and try it. You disconnect the dynamic stability control, click into sequential mode with that maximum shift speed showing, then brake, floor the throttle, release the anchors, and wait for all hell to break loose. And when it does, 62 miles an hour rest flashes by in just 4.1 seconds, a couple of tenths quicker than the manual version can manage. If you were to keep your right boot buried, this car would flash past the 100 mile an hour mark in just 8.8 .8 seconds, then keep going to an artificially limited 156 mile an hour maximum that could be extended to 170 miles an hour if you were to pay your dealer to tweak the engine software. In other words, there's not much between this and a proper supercar class model, like say Porsche's 911 GT3. It's only quick enough to show an early Lamborghini Gallardo a clean pair of heels. So yes, it's properly, thrillingly fast. And one of those cars that can leave you a little white-faced if you deploy the little horsepower on the road that might be a little narrow or bumpy. In a straight line on a decent surface though, you can enjoy the almost relentless acceleration to the full. And the soundtrack's great too. Okay, so there's a measure of cheating going on here with some artificial audio being piped through the car's speakers. But although that might have the purists up in arms, I don't really have too much of a problem with it. Progress and all that. Talking of progress, well, there's plenty on display here. The kind of Luddites who object to things like the piped engine note and the MDCT gearbox will also probably find fault with the adoption of electrically assisted power steering. Predictably, they're wrong again. The rack fitted to this car is sharply accurate and the integrated M servotronic function electronically adjusts the level of steering assistance depending on the car's speed. The system offers the driver three modes as standard with comfort, sport and sport plus options. I like the most aggressive setting. You make your choice from this servotronic button down here by the gear stick. There is part of a cluster of three switches that together replace the cruder drive performance control system BMW fits to its lesser models. Directly above the servotronic button, there's one for EDC electronic damper control, so you can adjust the ride quality and suspension stiffness. And above that, there's an M engine dynamics control button to adjust throttle response from laid back to ferocious. Now, with the damping, the options are the same as those for the steering, so you get comfort, sport, and sport plus. But with the throttle response, the options are efficient, sport, and sport plus. Truth to tell though, I have to say that in day-to-day -day use of this car, I reckon that you'll hardly ever need to use these switches. That's because your two most favoured mode combinations can be stored as one-shot selections via these useful M1 and M2 buttons. Here for instance, I've got my favourite fast road settings stored in M1. That's steering sport, throttle sport, and suspension comfort and my favourite track settings stored in M2. That means everything's set to Sport Plus. 
your gear shift speed preference can also be stored with these. I should perhaps point out that the Sport Plus settings really are designed for perfectly surfaced track use only. Like me though, you'll probably want to try them out anyway, just to see. The other aspect to this car that sets it apart from many of its rivals is the Active M differential. This electronically controlled multi-plate limited slip differential links up with the DSC dynamic stability control system and does its best to harness all that power and torque. Any impending loss of traction on one side of the car is identified at an early stage and anything between 0 and 100% differential lock can be applied within a fraction of a second. This means that wheel spin is prevented on slippery surfaces or in instances where the right and left rear wheel have widely differing amounts of grip. It also helps hugely through tight bends when the car is being thrown from lock to lock. Before finishing, I should certainly mention the brakes, always a crucial part of any proper performance car's repertoire. When I used to drive previous generation versions of this model around the old Nürburgring Nordschleifer, this was always the part of the car that I found slightly disappointing. Things have changed though, and the standard stoppers are very good in normal fast road use. Many serious drivers though will want to consider upgrading to the optional carbon ceramic discs that I'm trying here or at least they will until they see just how much specifying these will add to the cost of their cars. If you've regular track day attendance in mind for this BMW though, it'll be money well spent. In fact, I'd go as far as saying that it'd be a crime to buy this machine and never take it to a track for almost every part of the design has been completed with circuit driving in mind. Even the oil supply system has been designed for track use, complete with a special cover that limits the movement of oil under the effect of strong acceleration or lateral g-loading. Overall, there's no doubt that this remains the proper driver's tool its predecessors always were. It's not as light and chuckable as those earlier M cars, weighing in at 1500 kilograms, it can never be but then BMW makes a M235i model you should try if that's more the kind of thing that you're seeking. The M3 has moved on, but kept the spirit of the original. Is this how buyers will want their M car to look? Probably. This M3 sits 47 millimetres higher off the ground than its M4 Coupe stablemate, but it's a difference you'd never appreciate from a casual glance. Instead, your first impressions are of a rather menacing thing with real width to the design, especially when you view it from the front and take in the differences over an ordinary M Sport trimmed 3 Series saloon. The wider flared wheel arches, the characteristic power dome on the classic long bonnet and the way the deep front spoiler with its trio of air intakes sits purposefully beneath the trademark double slat kidney grille. These unique aerodynamically optimised twin stalk side mirrors with their translucent LED indicators are bespoke too. Moving around to the side, you'll spot other M3 keynotes like these M model vents cut into front wings that integrate so-called air breathers there to link up to the aero curtains in the front apron and help optimise the airflow around the wheel arches. There are squat rear haunches that simply yell front engine rear drive to those in the know and they shroud wheels that are 19 inches as standard and finished in ferret grey or as an option can be supplied with a jet black finish. It's the roof though that'll probably excite most comment amongst your friends. It's made of carbon fibre reinforced plastic and BMW denies it's a styling flourish, contending instead that it's there to save six kilos of weight and thereby lower this car's centre of gravity. Yeah, right. Weight saving indeed is key as a theme throughout this M3. 
Compared to the last V8 M3 model, we're talking of a car that's around 80 kilograms lighter and one that's been helped to that figure with trick features like a carbon drive shaft, a carbon prop shaft and lots of aluminium bits in both the suspension and in certain parts of the body like the front wings and the bonnet. Moving back to the rear, you'll find a boot lid that can also be finished in carbon fibre, featuring a tidy rear spoiler that takes its cues from the legendary E46 series M3 CSL of 2003. And to finish things off, there's a set of high-gloss quad exhaust tailpipes framed by this sculptural rear apron with its integrated diffuser. Looks great, doesn't it? It's just as good inside too, where you'll be greeted by an intuitively designed cockpit, the centrepiece of which is the M leather steering wheel with its M drive buttons for personalised vehicle setup. On M double clutch transmission models like this one, you also get gear shift paddles with a cool metal finish. And through the stitched wheel, you glimpse a purposeful set of motorsport-derived dials, with a segment beneath the rev counter showing the various suspension, throttle and steering setup options that you've chosen. Most buyers will also want to specify the head-up display that I have here that projects key driving information onto the bottom of the windscreen and reverts to a special M display when you activate one of the M drive buttons. I think the deep-set, leather-trimmed, heated, electrically adjustable M seats are my favourite interior touch, though, with their contoured sides, integrated headrests and pronounced raised elements. The stitching and perforation is a nice touch, too, as is the illuminated BMW M logo. Otherwise, the dashboard is pretty much as you'd find it in any M Sport-trimmed BMW 3 or 4 Series model. Does it have the sense of sheer occasion you'd find in a Mercedes or an Audi? Probably not, but then this is a working, driving environment, not a purely luxurious one. And it all works so well, the main dials in particular being a model of clarity. I particularly like the easy access to the climate and stereo controls that doesn't require you having to root around in sub-menus on an infotainment touchscreen. You don't get one of those here, and you don't need it, because BMW's iDrive system now works so effectively, uh, even if its screen isn't quite as well integrated into the dash layout as, say, you'll find with the Audi MMI setup. There's a lot on here, from uh, maintenance schedules to uh, visual handbook representations, and the many varied and mainly optional functions that make up the Munich Maker's connected drive system. And it's all very easy to find, particularly with uh, a larger rotary controller that's part of the BMW professional setup that comes as standard. Move further back and you get all the practicality advantages that will endear this M3 to family buyers like me, who simply couldn't countenance this car's M4 Coupe stablemate. True, it's not hugely spacious back here, but if you owned the old E90 generation M3 saloon in the past, you'll find that this car delivers an extra 100 millimetres of legroom, which is certainly welcome. Headroom isn't too bad either, although if you're anything above six foot, you might find it a tad pinched. Overall, though, you're looking at a useful improvement on what went before though it's still a pinch for three adults back here, and the rear-wheel drive layout means that the middle passenger's not going to love this hefty transmission tunnel that runs down the centre of the car. On to luggage space. There's the option to specify a comfort access feature that allows you to open the boot lid by swiping your foot beneath the bumper if, key in pocket, you approach the car laden down with bags. Lift it and you'll find 480 litres of space, 35 litres more than you'd get in an M4 Coupe, but perhaps more crucially, 30 litres more than a Mercedes-AMG C63 can offer. 
If you pay extra for the extended storage option I have here, you get a floor net to keep loose things in place, along with a side stowage net area, a strap to secure smaller items, multifunction luggage hooks, a 12 volt power socket, and plug-in segments for a luggage compartment floor liner you could use to divide up the boot area. If you need to carry bulkier stuff and don't need the back seats, there's the option to extend the space available with these useful split-folding rear backrests. So, what can you expect to pay for this car? Well, at launch, prices started around the £57,000 price point, but since over 90% of buyers opt to pay the extra £2,500 for the MDCT twin-clutch automatic gearbox, it's probably more accurate to think of this model as being a £60,000 car. As for rivals to this M3, well, there aren't really many direct ones. The most obvious is the saloon version of the Mercedes-AMG C63 model, which in standard form costs around the same as an M3, if you were to choose this BMW with the MDCT auto gearbox fitted. The Merc does offer another 45 brake horsepower from a larger, though still very efficient, V8 engine, but it isn't significantly faster and, crucially, isn't as involving to drive as an M3. Since Audi doesn't do a saloon version of the estate-only RS4 and Lexus has discontinued its likeable ISF, the only other realistic alternative is Jaguar's XFR. Again, we're talking here of a rival with more power, and XFR offers 503 brake horsepower. But we're also talking of one that will cost you over £5,000 more. And, as with the Mercedes, stick shift fans will be disappointed, as you can't have it with a manual gearbox. If, having considered all of that, you conclude that it is this BMW M3 that you really want, then you're probably going to want to know just how generous BMW has been with the standard spec. And the answer is that a surprisingly complete tally is included in the upfront price. The m Light alloy M double spoke 19-inch wheels, the carbon fibre style roof and the high gloss shadow line exterior trim with its discreet M rear spoiler all mark this car out from any humbler M Sport trimmed 3 Series saloon, even to those failing to notice either the discreet badge work or the quad chromed exhausts. Under the skin, of course, there's the active M differential and inside the M drive manager system so that you can choose driving settings that'll help you make the most of it. There are also lightweight M specific merino leather trimmed heated front seats with integrated headrests and illuminated logos. These motorsport style chairs place you perfectly in front of a lovely M multifunction three spoke stitched leather sports steering wheel through which you view a purposeful M instrument cluster. Other standard features include xenon headlamps, cruise control with a brake function, auto headlamps and wipers, front and rear park distance control sensors, a high quality DAB stereo and a choice of unique metallic paint colours. Another key inclusive part of the M3 package is BMW's professional navigation system with its sharp graphics, 3D map views and smart iDrive touch controller which can offer a pad for writing text or using a cursor on an interactive map. The navigation setup can also divert you around jams with real-time traffic information and you'll want to make use of BMW online services which give access to current localised information such as weather and news as well as providing an online search feature and helpful office functions. There are also the latest infotainment features like full speech recognition and voice control with message dictation function. And that's just the start. Delve deeper into the infotainment possibilities of this model and you'll find yourself getting familiar with a wide range of BMW connected drive services that aim to offer a wide series of information, entertainment and service features, including unlimited access to smartphone apps such as BMW Connected. 
Plus, there's web radio, access to social networking, and the Google Center Car System, so that you can plan your route beforehand on your PC, then remotely forward it to your vehicle. You'll have access to various BMW apps too, including my favourite one, a free remote app that enables you to remotely lock or unlock your car if you lose your keys. Also included within the connected drive package is BMW's emergency call system, which will automatically summon help after an accident, alerting the emergency services to your exact GPS location. Could be a lifesaver. Other more familiar standard safety features include Isofix child seat fastenings, a tyre puncture warning system, the usual twin front side and curtain airbags, plus all kinds of electronic acronyms to hopefully ensure that you'll never have to use them. Switchable DSC dynamic stability control, of course, which, when disconnected, activates an electronic limited slip function for the rear differential to help through spirited cornering. If all that's a bit too wild for you, then just settle back and leave the ASC automatic stability control and DTC dynamic traction control systems to take care of things. The ABS braking setup is aided by DBC dynamic brake control and CBC cornering brake control. Plus there's a brake drying function to ensure that even in the wet, the disc is optimally effective. Safety options include lane change and lane departure warning systems that will warn you of a potential collision when changing lanes. Then there's the Driving Assistant Plus setup, which warns of a looming collision with a pedestrian. You might also spend extra on a more advanced active cruise control system, high beam assistant headlamps that dip themselves in the face of oncoming traffic at night, and adaptive full LED headlights that turn with the bends and illuminate junctions as you go. So we've covered the things you get as standard, and the kind of features you could specify if you're feeling virtuous and safety conscious. But what about the kind of extra cost items that'll really make the MCAR ownership experience that bit more special? Well, as you'd expect, there are plenty of these. On a cosmetic level, you can delve into the BMW individual catalogue for special paint finishes, leather upholstery options and custom interior trim elements that will offer a really personalised look and feel to your car. But before getting into all of that, I'd want to think about the kind of performance model this is and specify it to suit. So I'd want features like the speed limit display, able to tell you what the current limit is on any road at any given time. Perfect for avoiding those heart-stopping moments when you're approaching a speed camera and genuinely have no clue what the limit is. Ideally, you'd want this to show on the optional M head-up display, which projects key information onto the bottom of the windscreen so that you don't have to take your eyes off the road. In an M car model, this feature comes with additional functions such as a gear display, rev counter and optimum shift indicator. What you won't have to pay extra for is the clever BMW M lap timer app, ideal for those looking to get the best out of their M car on track and there to allow owners to analyse their personal driving style. Once their smartphone is hooked up to the car via either a USB cable or the snap-in adapter that can be provided, customers can operate the lap timer app by using the iDrive controller. The app then records data such as speed, longitudinal and lateral acceleration, engine revs, the gear engaged, steering angle, accelerator position and fuel consumption. Afterwards, you can nerd out to your heart's content, analysing all of these graphs on your smartphone. You can even see driver reaction speed and allow two recordings on the same circuit to be compared corner by corner. The readings can either be your own or ones shared by email. You're going to need to be a track fiend to want to shell out for the most expensive item on the options list for this car, the M Carbon Ceramic Brakes, identifiable by smart gold calipers. These exhibit quite awesome fade-free stopping power, but then they should do, given an asking price that equates to around 10% of the price of the whole car.
It's probably not the biggest surprise in the world that shifting from the normally aspirated 4-litre V8 provided in the previous generation version of this car to the turbocharged 3-litre straight-six used here brings with it all kinds of efficiency benefits. Perhaps it's a bigger measure of BMW's achievement to say that they've developed a more powerful engine with 35% more torque, yet the combined fuel economy figure is 25% better than before, produced from a motor that's fully Euro 6 compliant. The actual numbers are 34 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and emissions of 194 grams per kilometre. Both of those figures achieved with the MDCT dual clutch auto transmission that I'm using here. If you want to stir the stick yourself with a manual model, those returns worsen a little, emissions being rated a whole tax band higher at 204 grams per kilometre, with the corresponding economy figure edging down to 32.1 miles per gallon. True, these returns do lag slightly behind those of a comparable Mercedes-AMG C63, but not by much and both cars are much closer than you'd expect they would be to the figures of a smaller, lighter, purebred sports car rival like Porsche's Cayman GTS. So, while the Porsche would cost you 125 pence per mile to run, this BMW comes in at 133.5 pence per mile. That's predictably far better than more traditionally engined V8 competitors can manage cars like Lexus's RCF Coupe or Jaguar's XFR Saloon. Such are the advantages of engine downsizing, particularly when, as here, they're combined with the fruits of BMW's efficient dynamics technology. This includes features like electromechanical power steering, auto stop-start, brake energy recuperation, on-demand control of engine ancillary components, uh, you also get uh, improved aerodynamics and reduced weight. As a result of all this, you get a set of overall running costs that mean owning this car need not be the willful act of huge extravagance it might at first seem. After all, residual values are also very strong and other ongoing costs such as servicing aren't exorbitant. Yes, you will ramp up bigger bills if you use your right boot in anger a good percentage of the time and chew through consumables like tyres and brake pads, but that's the same for any car in this price bracket. In fact, this M car's focus on weight saving means it's actually a good deal easier on its tyres and brakes than a comparable Audi RS or Mercedes C63 AMG model. BMW's M3 is different from the car it used to be. Of course it is. The Munich maker now has smaller, more agile motorsport tuned models like the M235i, if all you want are tarmac tearing thrills. So this Mark V M3 had to evolve into something a little more grown up, without losing the raw dynamic excitement that's always characterised this iconic badge. Tough to achieve at the same time as meeting demands for weighty safety legislation and eco-minded engineering. But not impossible, as this fifth generation model proves. Yes, it's lighter, much more economic and better able to pretend to be nothing more than a luxury sports saloon if you're not in the mood for motorsports magic. But, thank goodness, it also still knows how to entertain. With the right buttons pressed and the right electronics deselected, it's still you have to master where yours are the risks, but yours too the rewards. It can, in other words, still be slightly scary in a way a rival Mercedes or Audi could never be. If you don't like the thought of that, then I'd suggest that perhaps such a C63 or RS4 might be a better bet. But you won't find many professional drivers choosing to spend their own money on cars like those two if their need is to mix practicality with performance. No, for these people, only an M3 will do. You could happily own this one, never knowing the nastier side to its nature. But the crucial conclusion I've reached here is that it still has it. Perhaps those last three words are all you really need to know when it comes to this BMW. It still has it. 
In spite of everything, we still have an M-car fit to continue this famous bloodline. Thank goodness 